<coughs> Hello, everybody. Ah! Oh, I'm getting old. Anyway, I am Mrs. Spellman, and I'm your math teacher. I love kids, and I love being a math teacher. I've been doing this job for 27 years, I think. Long time. Um, <coughs> And it just brings me joy, believe it or not. I, I love I love what I do, and I hope it shows. Anyway, what we're going to do every day is we're going to take some notes. If you got a chance to print out the notes, great. If you didn't, if you don't have a printer, don't worry. Just have a notebook that you keep all your notes in. I would definitely suggest having a notebook only for math, because if you have your Spanish in there and your history or science, everything gets jumbled together. And I will tell you, um, that's not going to work. So, have only one math um, notebook, okay? Or you can also get a three ring binder and then you can just put things in the binder. But again, just have that binder for math. Okay, we're going to start. Sometimes I talk fast. If I do, just send me a little email and say, Woo, Mrs. Spellman, you were rushing. So um, slow me down. It's just I get so excited about math. I'm a nerd. All right, so we're going to start with Chapter 12 in our book. We actually kind of go backwards. We're going to talk about probability. It's a branch of mathematics where we look at how likely is it that something is going to occur? <clears throat> so, in our town of Green Bay, we've got the casino. And uh, there are statisticians who look at uh, all the card games. How likely is it going to be that someone's going to win $1,000 this afternoon? And, and that's what they look at. And there's a whole study of, of mathematics that just looks at how likely something is to happen. Kind of cool. So let me turn um, this around so we can look at our notes and we're going to get started, okay? Now we've been away from school for a long time and so I think the first thing I'd really like to do, I'd like to warm up with a little bit of math. And the math that I want to focus on today is algebra. <clears throat> so let's, let's look at um, these three problems right here. And what we're going to do is we're either going to add or subtract like terms. Now it's been, whew, what, six months maybe that you've done any algebra? So let's talk about the rules. When you're adding or subtracting like terms, the only items that you combine are the coefficients. And the word coefficient it's just a fancy word. It just means the number in front of a variable. So, 2x plus 3x. How many x's do you have, folks? 2 plus 3 is 5. We've got 5x. Now, here's what I'd like you to do. I would like you to just pause the video and try these two all by yourself, okay? And then turn the video back on and let's see if we got the same answer. Okay, so pause me. Okay, let's see how you did. Uh, 6 plus 7 is 13. And what kind of items are we adding? We're adding w to the fifth. So we have 13 w to the fifth. Notice, people, there's a little pattern. When you're adding, you don't change that variable part. We started with x's, we end with an x. Now look at this one. We've got w to the fifth. We didn't change that variable part, did we? So let's follow that pattern. We've got like terms here. We've got root threes. Well, eight minus six is two, and we've got two root threes. Again, we didn't change what we usually call that variable part. But in this case, we didn't have a variable. We had a root, but we still followed the pattern. <laughs> and that's why I love math. I'm always looking for a pattern because patterns repeat. And then we've got kind of a shortcut. Now let's look at this column. 
we are going to be multiplying. And uh, if you want, stop the video right now, okay? And uh, work on these. See if you remember, how do you multiply in algebra? All right, well, when I multiply in algebra, what I like to do first is on paper, I get my like terms together. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to swap these two numbers, okay? So I'm going to have my 2 with my 3. And then I'm going to have my x's together. There we go. Well, what's 2 times 3? 2 times 3 is 6. Now we've got to be careful here. x times x. The rule in algebra is that you have to add the exponents. Well, you might say, hey, Spellman, we don't even have any exponents here. Well, we do. They're just invisible. They're ones. And so what we do in algebra when we're multiplying, we add our exponents. So 1 plus 1 is 2. So we have 6x squared. Okay. Now, can you please pause me? Let's try these two. This one's going to be tricky. I won't lie. Uh, but pause the video. Try, try this one all by yourself. See what you get. <clears throat> all right. Well, let's, let's look at this. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to swap these two. Again, I like to get my like terms together. 6 times 7 is 42. Okay, now I've got to add my exponents here. 5 plus 5 is 10, so I've got w to the 10th. <clears throat> so there's our answer, 42 w to the 10th power. Okay, last but not least, I am going to swap this integer with a root, so then I get my integers together, and I get my square roots together. Okay, all right, a positive times a negative is a negative, so let's see here. That'll be negative 48. I'm running out of room, so. Okay, now it's 3 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9, right? Okay, now notice those 3's are under the square root, so our 9 has to be under the square root. Now, do you remember what the square root of 9 is? The square root of 9 is 3. So I actually have negative 48 times 3. And let's see here. I don't have a calculator. So we're going to multiply here. 8 times 3 is 24. 4 times 3 is 12, 13, 144. Okay, so I got negative 144 for my answer. Okay, now, you know, math is kind of like a sport. You got to warm up, right? And then you got to practice, practice, practice. So we just warmed up. I'm feeling ready to go, and let's dive in. So today, <clears throat> we're going to cover section 12.1 in your book. All right. And these are the learning targets, okay? We're going to talk about what outcomes are, what a sample space is. We're going to talk about set language and notation. Notation is that special way that we write things. And then we're going to talk about calculating probabilities. Are we going to get to all these today? Huh, maybe not, but we'll, we'll see how far we get, okay? So first of all, an experiment in probability, ladies and gentlemen, is an action where the result is uncertain. Okay, so let's, let's just highlight something. Let's say the result is uncertain. So what do I mean by that? Well, if I had a dice and I threw a dice, now here's what dice look like. These are dice. Um, if I threw the dice, I wouldn't know that for sure I would get a four and a two. It's uncertain. I have no idea what I'm going to get. Let's say I'm playing a game and I have a spinner like this. This is called a spinner. Okay, and let's pretend I was spinning the spinner. I don't know that it's going to land on two. I don't know that it's going to land on four. I have no idea. It's uncertain. So that would be called an experiment, okay? So I wrote a little note here. An experiment is when you flip a coin. Okay, so let's, let's say you have a quarter. Now if you think about a quarter, 
we've got one side that has a head, one side that has a tail. You flip it. You don't know what's going to land on the ground. You don't know if it's a heads or tails. We have no idea. Okay, um, and then we can have a spinner and uh, another experiment. You could say uh, picking a card out of a deck. So let's write that down. We could pick a card out of a deck. That's another experiment, okay? Now, I'm going to just uh, skip the word probability for a, a moment. We'll come back to that. So let's say that we decided to roll a dice, okay? That's our experiment. Now, I know that if I roll a dice, I can get a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, or a 6. Those are called my outcomes, okay? So your outcomes are the result of an experiment. All right, I can flip a coin. That's my experiment. What can I get? Here are my outcomes. I can get a heads or I can get a tails. Now, some um, teachers and books call outcomes events. It's the same thing, okay? So don't get worked up if I use the word outcomes over the word events. I like the word outcomes, all right? <clears throat> now, probability is what we're going to be studying for this whole chapter. Probability is the likelihood of something happening or not happening. So think of if you watch the news. Uh, today I'm making this video. It's August 24th. By the way, it's 86 outside. It's really hot. What's the probability that we're going to have a snowstorm today? Well, we're not going to, right? Forget it. It's not going to happen. The probability is 0%. Now, the likelihood that something can happen can be between 0% and 100%. Now, sometimes people don't like percents. They prefer decimals. So if you're a decimal person, probability would occur between 0 or 1. All right? Okay, so again, I know I'm probably talking quickly. Just pause the video. Make sure that you have all of these definitions written down. Now, not going to lie, chapter 12, folks, has a lot of vocabulary, and you need to understand all of these words. So make sure you're taking very good notes. Make sure you're highlighting words, okay? You can add other items here if you'd like. Maybe you want to watch a YouTube video tonight. Maybe you want to hear a different teacher explain probability. Go for it. I think that's a great idea. And then just add to your notes. All right? All right. Let's go to the next page. The next word we're going to talk about is this word right here, this word sample space. So let's highlight that. And again, if you're taking notes in a notebook, just write down the word sample space, and I would probably highlight that word. Okay. Your sample space is the set of all possible outcomes, okay? Every last one of them. So all your outcomes. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's go back to our rolling our dice. Here's all the outcomes right there for rolling a dice, right? So these... One, two, three, four, five, six. That's my sample space. All the outcomes that I have for flipping a coin are right here. I had two outcomes. But if I look at this, that would be my sample space. Okay? Now, sometimes in probability, we want to list all of our outcomes but we might have two experiments happening at the same time. Now let's look at that. Let's look at example number one. It says you spin this spinner. Okay, so here's a nice little spinner. And again, if you're taking notes in a notebook, you want to draw a quick little picture. 
and you're flipping a coin. Okay, so let's pretend we have um, a quarter, and you're going to find out I'm a terrible artist. So there's my, my quarter, there's the heads, and of course on the other side we've got tails. It says, how many possible outcomes are in the sample space? List the possible outcomes. I'm going to show you how to do that. I like making a table, okay? And so I'm going to have a vertical column and a horizontal column. Now right here, I'm going to list my outcomes that I have for spinning a spinner, okay? And then right here, I'm going to list my outcomes of flipping a coin. Now I'm just going to use an H for heads and a T for tails, okay? And actually, let's, let's make a nice little grid here, okay? Okay, so I can flip a head and I can get a one on the spinner. I can flip a heads and then I can get a two on the spinner. I can flip a head and I can get a three. Or I can flip a head and I can get a four on the spinner. All right. Now I can also get a tail and a one. A tail and a two. A tail and a three. And a tail and a four. So I've got six outcomes. Okay. So we like to use those words. So these are my outcomes. And right here, all of my outcomes together are called the, what are they called? You remember? The sample space. Okay. All right, let's try example number two. Dairy Queen is giving away free one-topping sundaes today. Your flavor choices are chocolate, vanilla, and twist. Now, twist means half chocolate and half vanilla, okay? Your topping choices are hot fudge, sprinkles, and mint. How many outcomes are in the sample space? And it says make a table. So you just saw me make a table right here, okay? Now I want you to make a table. So I want you to pause this video and I want you to think about this. I want you to try. And you know what? If you have to erase, that is just fine. So pause the video. Okay, if you were a little stuck and you needed a hint, here's a table. We've got chocolate, vanilla, twist, we've got hot fudge, we've got sprinkles, and we've got mint. Now I can see right now, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I've got nine outcomes here in my sample space. So find the outcomes, please. There we go. So today, let's make sure that we're practicing our words. So let's write ourselves a note. We have nine outcomes, nine outcomes in our sample space. And we used a table, okay? We used a table to show our sample space. <clears throat> All right, example number three. You flip a coin and you choose a marble from a bag. 
in the bag there are two blue marbles, two yellow marbles, and one red marble. How many outcomes are in the sample space? Well, make a table. Alright, so let's look what I did. I've got my heads and my tails here. Now it says two blue marbles, so here's what I did. B for blue, and then my first blue one, and then here's my second blue one. And then we wanted two yellow ones, so I've got Y for yellow, so here's my first yellow one, here's my second yellow one, and then a red one. So how many outcomes are in the sample space? Well, let's count. There would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's 10 outcomes. Okay? All right. Now, I want to show you a way to get this number without making the table. What you can do is you can multiply your choices, okay? So we can do something like this our coin outcomes and our marble outcomes. So our coins, we had heads or tails, and our marbles, we had one, two, three, four, five. Okay, two times five is ten. All right, now let's back up the bus over here. I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, where this? Whoopsies. Sorry about that. We had eight outcomes. Um, how can I get this eight if I don't want to see all of them? Well, let's multiply. We had two outcomes for our <coughs> coin, and we had four outcomes for our spinner. So you might want to write yourself a note what you're doing. Coin and spinner. And two times four is... Eight. Okay? There we go. Now, what I'd like to do, I'd like to just pause this video, okay? And you've got some homework. Now, again, if you don't have a... Um, if you do not have a printer, don't worry. Just copy this down on a piece of paper. So here's what I'd like you to do right now. It says, in exercise one and two, find the number of possible outcomes in the sample space. Now, not only do I want you to find the possible outcomes, I want to see the table. I want to see your sample space. Okay, so it says, you're going to roll a die and you're going to draw a token at random from a bag containing three pink tokens. So here's pink one, pink two, pink three, and a red token. Okay, now this word, die. In English, English gets confusing. We've got one, let's see here, hold on. Ah. This is actually, I should say the word pair. This is a pair of dice. If we're talking about two of these, we say dice or three dice. If I'm talking about just one, it's the word die. Okay? All right. A little English lesson there. So let's talk about this, folks. What are we going to put over here? What can you get when you roll a dice? Well, if you can't remember, what should you do? Probably look at your notes. So let's go back here. Oh, look at this. This is why Mrs. Spellman writes things down. Rolling a dice, we could get a 1, 
a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, or a 6. Okay, so you're going to put that right here, and then you're going to make a nice table. All right? Okay. After you do that one, I want you to flip this over. We're going to make another table over here. It says you are spinning two spinners. Okay, we've got this one and we have this one. One has numbers on it. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. The other has colors on it. Make a table showing your outcomes of spinning both of them. Okay, so you're going to take these colors. Now, instead of writing red, just put R, okay? And I want you to fill in this column and then make your table, okay? Now, don't worry about this right now. We just want to see a table, okay? All right, so once you're done with problem number four and problem number one, just start the video again, okay? Okay, let's look at this right here. <clears throat> Here's a nice little chart, and it shows the different ways that we think about probabilities, okay? Now, some people like to think of probabilities as percents. So that's between 0% and 100%. Some people don't like percents. They would prefer decimals. Okay, well, 25% is 0.25. 50%, you can write it as 0.5 or 0.50. 75% is 0.75. 100% is 1. And then we've got folks that really like fractions. They don't like decimals or percents. Well, okay, 0.25 is 1 fourth. 0.50 is 1 half. So I, how do I, hmm. My favorite, I guess, um, hmm. I, I'm kind of a percent girl and a fraction girl, okay? If you're a fraction person, please write yourself a note. You always have to reduce your fractions, okay? That is so important. Reduce, reduce, reduce. There's actually a key on your calculator. It looks like this. That key will reduce your fractions, okay? Now, some of you might have a Casio calculator, and then I think your reducing key kind of looks like that. It looks like a fraction, okay? All right, now, here's what we're going to talk about. Next thing we're going to talk about is a favorable outcome. What is a favorable outcome? Well, let's say, let's say I'm at the casino, and I'm, I'm putting a lot of money on um, rolling a six, okay? If I roll a six, I win a thousand dollars. That's my favorable outcome. It's what I want, okay? So a favorable outcome is what you really want to have happen, all right? Now, when all outcomes are equally likely, so that means in a perfect world, the theoretical probability of the event can be found by using this formula. It's the number of favorable outcomes, okay, over the total number of outcomes. Now, you're probably going, what? Okay, I promise, not hard. So let's, let's think about, let's think about rolling a dice, okay? So let's just kind of draw a dice. Okay, now think about what's on a dice. Okay, um, and I want to know, let's see here, let's say my, fa my favorable outcome is going to, uh, I'm going to roll a six, okay? 
So first of all, here's what we're going to do. We write down the letter P. That just tells someone we're looking for probabilities. Okay? And then you have to tell someone, well, the probability of what? what? What's your favorable outcome? What do you want to have happen? I want a 6. Okay, so let's just write ourselves a note here. That's our favorable outcome. Okay, now let's, let's look up, up here. This says we have to make a fraction. It's the total number of favorable outcomes over the total number of outcomes. Okay, so let's, let's talk about that. If, if my favorable outcome is a 6, how many 6's are there on a dice? There's only one 6. Now, how many outcomes are there on a dice? Well, if, you, if you're not familiar with dice, go back here. Here we go. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six outcomes. So here you go. And I'm done. Pretty easy, right? Okay, let's say, let's say we want to find the probability of rolling a two. Now that's our favorable outcome. Okay, now let's go back up here. Okay, now how many favorable outcomes, so how many twos are on a dice? There's only one. Out of, how many outcomes are there on a dice? There's six. Okay. Now, if you want to write this as a decimal, you just put one divided by six on your calculator. Okay, let's try it. Let's get a little harder. What's the probability of rolling an even number on a dice? Okay, a little bit harder. So let's think about this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write down all of my outcomes. Okay. And let's see, how many evens are there? All right, this time I've got three evens out of six. Now you have to reduce three out of six is one half. Okay, um, let's try this one. Using dice again, what's the probability of rolling a number that is less than less than 5 let's say okay so what's the probability of rolling a number less than 5 so let's look at our options here less than 5 less than 5 there we go we've got four numbers that were less than 5 and now let's reduce we can divide by 2 and here we go so that's probability. It's not that bad, is it? Okay, now let's look at this table over here, okay? Now if you didn't fill out your table, fill it out, okay? Okay, now let's find some probabilities using this table. So let's see here. P for probability. How about, what's the probability that you would flip tails? Okay, so let's, let's go on our chart here. Where do we find tails? All of these are tails. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, there's five out of how many outcomes do we have here, gang? We had 10. So 5 out of 10 is 1 half. Okay, what's the probability 
of, let's say, um, we're going to have the probability of getting blues, blues and heads, blues and heads, blues and heads. Okay, let's see. Blues and heads, blues and heads. Okay, so we had two out of ten, which is one-fifth. Okay. What about, let's try one more. See, this is easy, isn't it? It's kind of fun. Um, how about the probability of, how about the probability of anything that's blue? Anything that's blue. Let's see, how many blues do we have? Here's a blue. Here's a blue. Here's a blue. And here's a blue. So we've got four, four outcomes out of the ten. And let's reduce, okay? There we go. So when you're going to do probabilities, they're much easier if you have a table because the table shows you all of your outcomes. And if you don't have all your outcomes looking at you, I think it gets tricky. Or something like this. You know, I, I just copied down all my outcomes of a dice. I need to see it. And then I circled the items that were less than five, okay? So notice, all of my probabilities that I wrote down today in my notes, I went with fractions, okay? Now, if you want, you can change all of these to decimals. One-fifth is point two zero. You can do that. And the key that will do that, that will change, let me show you, how to, if you want to change from a fraction to a decimal, there's a key on your calculator. It looks like this. And it has F, and then it has a little arrow, and then it says a D on it. That's the key that will go back and forth from a fraction to a decimal. Okay? Alrighty. So, Now, here's what I want you to do, folks. I want you to now use the chart that you've made. I want you to tell me, what's the probability of getting a four and a blue? Or what's the probability of getting an odd number with a yellow? What's the probability of getting an even that's green? Now, be careful here. What's the probability of not getting a four? So let's talk about this because these get tricky. If it says not four, well, then you're looking for a one, a two, a three, or a five, right? Okay, so we're looking for these with a red. So find your probabilities. Make sure that you're writing them as fractions first and then reducing them. I'm trying to pause the video, and it's not pausing. Sorry about that, folks. Okay, let's see here. Last but not least. Okay, let's go to page five of our notes. Let's look at this. Um, it says, a quarter is flipped three times. What is the probability that it lands on heads exactly three times? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're not going to make a table this time. What we're going to do is we are going to make what's called a tree diagram. Okay? So let's just highlight that. And after we make a tree diagram, we're going to list our outcomes. And then we're going to find the probability of getting a head, a head, and then another head. Okay, so let me talk about tree diagrams and when they're useful. Tree diagrams are useful when you have two or more experiments happening. Okay, 
and our experiment here is flipping this quarter. So let's talk about an oak tree. An oak tree is made by a little acorn. So here's my little acorn. Okay, and I always, my teacher always said, I gotta see your acorn. So here's our acorn, and what grows out of acorns? Branches, right? And each branch shows an outcome of the experiment. So right here, when you flip a coin, here's our first flip, I can get a heads or a tails, okay? Now let's say I got a heads. Now let's just cover this up here. Okay. All right. So now what we're going to do, we're going to flip our coin again. So let's tell ourselves what we're doing. Okay. So this is our second coin flip. And you always want to write down what you're doing because otherwise it gets very confusing for people. Okay. So now our second coin flip, I've got two more branches now. I can get a heads or I can get a tails. Okay, now over here, let's go back. If I would have gotten a tails first, then I could flip my coin again and I could get a heads or I could get a tails. Now notice how these are all lining up. All right. Okay, now I've got a third coin flip. Okay, so let's pretend, let's kind of, let's back up the bus. Let's say we got a head, then we flipped a coin, we got another head. Okay, now we're going to flip our third coin. What can we get, gang? We can get a head or we can get a tail, right? Okay, now let's say we got a head, a tail, and now we're going to flip again. What can we get? We can get a head or a tail. And I'm just going to keep on filling these out. Heads or tails? Heads or tails? Okay, now we, we were done with our tree diagram. Now we're going to list our outcomes, okay? So let's, let's put them right here. We have a head, a head, a head. So I'm just going to put H, H, H. Okay, so head, head, head. Or we could have gotten H, H, T, H, H, T, okay. Or we could get H, T, H, or H, T, T. Okay, now you fill out the other outcomes. I'm going to pause this. Okay, so I just noticed I had eight outcomes. Now, if I just wanted to know how many outcomes I was going to get, if I was, like, let's say I was in a lazy mood and I didn't want to make this crazy thing, I could just write myself a note here, flip one. I could multiply that by the number of outcomes of flip two and flip three. So I had heads or tails. Heads or tails, heads or tails, eight outcomes, okay? All right, now let's see here. We want to know what's the probability of getting a head, a head, and a head. So let's find that. Okay, here's HHH. Do we have it anywhere else? Nope. How many times did it show up? It showed up once out of eight times. Okay, now. You're going to find some other probabilities for me.
Okay, let's try this one. What's the probability of heads, heads, and tails? And what's the probability of having two tails? I'm going to put the word only here, okay? What's the probability of heads, heads, tails? Well, I found it right here. It just showed up once. One out of eight. And then the probability of two tails. Let's see here. There was two tails right here. Okay. Uh, two tails right here. And two tails right here. So that's three out of eight. Okay, so here's what you guys are going to do. Uh, let's go back to the worksheet. We've made a tree diagram. Okay, I want you to make a tree diagram. And then I, and I, here's your little acorn. And then I want um, to know how many different outfits can you make? What's the probability that your outfit has dress pants? And what's the probability of an outfit that has a gray hat, a white shirt, and jeans? Okay, now, people, you have to remember, probability means I want a fraction. And then if you'd like to change your fraction to a decimal, go right ahead. So let's, let's maybe put this fraction bar in here right now. Okay, so you need a numerator and a denominator. Okay, back here. Let's look at number three. Number three is a problem that deals with um, rolling two dice. Your first roll is in red, okay, and your second roll is in white. So this is your table showing all of the outcomes, okay? Now let's read the directions. It says, fill in the parentheses with the probability that you are trying to find. Then find the probability. Finally, reduce your answer. So here, the first one was done for you. It says, find the probability that the sum is 5. So notice, we just filled in our parentheses. Okay? This says that we're finding the probability, and this just tells you what we're doing. We're finding the probability of a sum of 5. Okay, so here, you're going to find the probability that the sum is not 5. Okay? Here, what are you finding? The probability of what? What are we doing? Okay. Here, what are we doing? Probability of what? So, um, I want you to notice if you counted all these, one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, if you kept counting, there are 36 outcomes. Okay, so I want you to finish up this worksheet, okay? And if you have any problems, please let me know. Bye.